that's my little Margie. I've been both mother and father to her since she was born. She's grown up now, and you think my job's all done, eh? <laughs> well, that's what you think. When she was little, I could spank her and make her mind me. I had control over her. I made her eat her spinach, no candy before meals. And when she disobeyed, I took her roller skates away for a week. But what can you do when a girl reaches this age? She's completely out of hand. I've got a problem, believe me. I've got a problem. That's my father. I've raised him from childhood. That is, my childhood. He's nearly 50 now, and you'd think he'd settle down, wouldn't you? Well, that's what you think. Today, he looks better in shorts on a tennis court than fellas 25. Girls wink at him, and what's worse, he winks back at them. I want a nice, old, comfortable father. I try to look after him, but he just won't settle down. I've got a problem, believe me, I've got a problem. Hold it a second, Charlie, I'll be right with you. Yes. We may as well say goodnight here. There's no use asking for trouble. All right. You're stuck for another good night kiss. Come on, walk me to the door. What about your father? Oh, we'll be quiet. You know, every time your father approaches me, I automatically fondle my blue cross card. Oh, he's all talk. He wouldn't hurt you. All talk? You mean like last night when he talked a three-inch rip down the back of my tweed jacket? Well, considering it was nearly 2 a.m., a three-inch rip isn't bad. No, it was a nice little rip for 2 a.m. Sometime I'll have to try one of his 5 a.m. specials. They go all the way down the jacket, one trouser leg, and in good weather you can watch your argyle separate in a brilliant spectacle of color. Oh, Freddie, stop talking and kiss me goodnight again. And nothing like a goodnight kiss. Come on in. Yeah, but your father. Oh, didn't I tell you? He's out for the evening. He's out? Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, it's like you said, Freddie. There's nothing like a goodnight kiss. When a fella's sure it's his last kiss, he puts everything he's got into it. And the way I've worked it, we've already had two last kisses and still have one to go. Come on, I'll whip us up a snack. Are you positive about your father? It's nearly midnight. Will you stop worrying? Dad won't be home before three or four, maybe later. Where'd he go? He took Roberta to the opening of the new Angio Piazza show. Oh, hey, but that's over by now. No show runs this late. Look, I better be going. Don't be silly. I said he took Roberta. You know what that means. They won't be in till all hours. I've got to do something about her. I thought you liked Roberta. Sure, I like her for anybody but Dad. Every time he takes her out, he thinks he has to do the town like some college boy. He's too old to be out dancing half the night. He ought to be home in bed. He'd look kind of silly dancing in bed. Freddie, it isn't a joke to me. Dad's nearly 50, but reminding him of it only makes him more stubborn. I wish Roberta would fall for somebody else. Well, you could always toss some handsome guy her way, get her married off. You may think that's funny, but I've seriously considered it. Trouble is, Roberta's so darn picky. She wouldn't go for just anybody. It'd have to be somebody really special to beat Dad's time. I wonder how Piazza's new show is. Oh, he's always great. Yeah, <laughs> terrific guy. You like him? I thought most men hated him because they're envious of his good looks. You want to know something? What? If Piazza ever saw you, he'd envy me. <laughs> Just for that, I'll give you a choice. Cheese on rye or cheese on white? How about a slice of both, huh? <laughs> Just in case. Freddie, will you relax? I told you Dad won't be home for hours. I'm sorry, but I just don't agree with you. Just a second, we'll let Charlie give us his opinion. But, Vern, it's such a silly thing to argue about, darling. It's not that important. Of course it isn't, but it won't hurt to prove that I'm right. Now, Charlie, give me your honest opinion. What do you think of Angio Piazza? You've seen him, haven't you? Not on the stage, but I caught him in a couple of television shows. Okay, now tell me what you think of him. Don't let me influence you, but just say what you think. I'll be very surprised if a man of your intelligence doesn't agree a thousand percent that Piazza's a stuffy, sticky ham and not too handsome either. Gee, Mr. Albright, I'd like to go along with you, but I think the guy's got something. 
Why, if I had a face like his and all the girls would be swooning over me. All right, Charles, all right. You're not mad at me, are you, sir? You're entitled to your own opinion. But you didn't say good night. Good night. Good night. You're coming in for nightcap, aren't you? Well, from your general attitude, I thought you'd cancel the invitation. Oh, Roberta, dear, let's not be childish. Let's forget about the whole thing, okay? Okay. I'll get some more milk. Guess who? Give me a hint. Sit down, dear. I'll get some ice. Don't get a guess. Give me another clue. I think I'm getting warm. I'll give you a real clue. Margie, where are your hands? I'm here. Why? I think we have company. Guess who? I was just about to leave, Mr. Albright. I... Now, Dad, take it easy. Think of your health. Think of my health. Leave me alone with Freddie just a minute, dear. Oh, but, Dad... Don't worry. There won't be any trouble. All right. Relax, Freddie. I just want to ask you a simple question. Sure, sure, Mr. Albright. Now, here's the deal. I know how Margie feels about a certain party, so I'm not going to bother asking her. But you see, Miss Towns and I had a slight disagreement tonight, and although I don't mind losing an argument once in a while, I do like to feel that there's somebody on my side. Do you follow me? Not at all, but whatever it is, sir, I'm on your side. Good, good. You know, somehow I don't recall coming in here and seeing you kissing Margie. Swell. Now, what's the lie you want me to tell? Well, Roberta and I saw a play tonight. And then he became so infuriated, we left the copa without even dancing once. Just because the waiter said he liked Angio Piazza? Oh, ghost. <laughs> that name is poison to your father, as of right now. But he'll get over it. Roberta, my dear. Yes, Fred. About Angio Piazza. Oh, Vern, no more tonight, please. But, dear, I thought it would be kind of nice to hear what Freddie has to say. No, Freddie, don't say anything. Why not? I'm entitled to an opinion. Go home, Freddie. Go now. Don't say a word. Margie, please. What do you say, Freddie? What do you think of Angio Piazza? I think he's a bum. Strictly a no-talent bum. Kind of goony, too. <laughs> well, Roberta, dear. Vern Albright, I've had just about all of this that I can stand for one evening. I've seen you in childish moods before, but never quite so ridiculous. I like Angio Piazza, and I plan to keep right on liking him. I think he's perfectly charming and extremely handsome. We can't all have an Angio Piazza, but we can dream. Put that under your pillow and sleep on it. Good night. Wait, Roberta. You and your big mouth. But, Mr. Albright. Go home. And don't come back. Freddy. Margie, this place confuses me. It confuses me. Oh, I'm sorry. But listen, remember what we were talking about? About marrying Roberta off? Margie, you're getting that look in your eye. Good night. Oh, Freddie, wait. You heard it yourself. She's crazy about Angio Piazza. Margie, look, you've done some of the craziest things I've ever heard of. But if you think you can get to the biggest star of the season, honey, it's impossible. Well, there must be some way, Freddie. Think of something. Oh, stop dreaming, baby. There isn't a chance. Well, the guy doesn't even answer his telephone unless it's Morton Warnock or some big producer like that calling. Morton Warnock? You're getting that look again. It just might work. Margie, the elevator's coming. Kiss me goodnight. I'm sure it'll work. Good night, Margie. Yes, that's right. May I speak with him, please? Mr. Morton Warnock's secretary, Mr. Piazza. He's the producer, sir. Oh, who cares about him? He's a lady young and beautiful. Oh, she sounds young. <laughs> then she must be beautiful. I shall insist upon it. Angio Piazza speaking. Mr. Piazza, Mr. Warnock is giving a little cocktail party today at 5, and he'd like very much to have you come. Well, I won't be able to stay very long, but I shall be delighted to drop in. She's a vision. Yes? Angio Piazza's secretary. Angio Piazza's secretary. Put her on. Hello? Mr. Warnock, Mr. Piazza is giving a little cocktail party today at 5, and he'd like very much to have you come. Margie, are you serious? How did you ever manage to get him to... Oh, he's very charming. He accepted without question. Oh, and naturally, I'd like to meet him. That little disagreement we had last night wouldn't be anything compared to what your father would... Oh, don't worry about that. Dad won't be home until late tonight. Just come and enjoy yourself. Oh, and if you want to, bring some other girls along. All right, Margie, I will. Bye. Yeah? 
Oh, sure. You invited him just for Roberta. What? Well, I think you invited him for yourself. What's the matter with you? I thought you liked him. I like him fine up on the stage, but not around you. Who's a jealous stoop? Well, okay, goodbye. Now, Dad, what'll I do about him? Yes, my daughter. Oh, sure, put her on. Hi, dear, what's up? Mr. Horton? Why did he call there? He said he couldn't reach you at your office. You know how long distance calls are sometimes. Anyway, he wants you to meet him at... Client or no client, this is ridiculous. What plane will he be on? You don't know? Well, there's a 610 plane, the 830 plane, the 1030 plane. All right, I'll meet all three of them. Thanks, honey. So if you'd let me borrow your maid for a couple of hours, I'd really appreciate it, Miss Odette. Do you think I could get a peek at him, Margie? Certainly, you can join the party. You've got yourself a maid. Oh, thanks a million, Miss Odette. Send her over right away. Excellent cocktail. Let me get you another. Thank you. I can't understand why our host hasn't spoken to me yet. A uh, bit unusual, don't you think? Host? Yes, Angio Piazza. Uh, who invited you, Miss Townsend? Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Piazza, of course. Have you met the host yet? Host? You mean hostess, don't you? Morton Barnock. Miss Townsend. At least, that's who invited me. Oh, excuse me a moment. Of course. Shall we sit down? Uh, Mr. Warnock. Oh, Mr. Piazza. <laughs> Delightful party. A charming friend of yours I was just chatting with. She's my friend? Well, of course, you have so many lady friends. I don't seem to recall the face, but the ankle looks slightly familiar, however. Delightful party, and I want to thank you oh, for Mr. the... Mr. Uh... Warnock, you should not thank me. I should thank you. After all, you're the one who... Your likes. drink, Mr. Warnock. Thank you. Suppose we ask the young lady. Should the guest thank the host or the host thank the guest? Well, I say I should thank Ridiculous you. Ridiculous Warnock, I should thank you. Such charming, gracious gentlemen. Suppose we give you both your way. Together now, say thanks. Splendid. How ingenious. <laughs> Together. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to steal Mr. Piazza, Mr. Warnock. Do you mind? No, but I'd much rather if you'd steal Mr. Warnock. But uh, you go right ahead. <laughs> Shall we go out on the balcony? I want to talk... I'll be right back. Excuse me. Who's the young lady? Why, don't you know her? No, who is she? I don't know. Excuse me, miss. I'm an old friend of Mr. Piazza's. He said it would be all right if I dropped by. That all right with you, miss? Jones is the name. Sam Jones, an old timer in the theatrical business. Freddie Wilson, go home. Well, if you really invited that guy for Roberta, why should I go home? All right. But don't you dare mess things up for me. I've got to get him alone and sell him on Roberta. Go on in. I'll see who this is. Miss Odette! Where is he? In the living room. Huh. I'll introduce you. Mr. Warnock, Mr. Piazza, may I present Miss Odette? Sure. How do you do? Angio Piazza. Oh, my dad. Oh. There we are. Now maybe we can get that fresh air. Good. Oh, hi, Roberta. Freddy. Yeah. You say you want to talk to me about a woman. You have chosen my favorite subject. But well, this woman, she thinks you're wonderful. Thank you so much. Tell me more about this woman. Well, she's very mature, very warm, and just the right age. Mellow, possessing an understanding one acquires only with experience. I think I understand what you mean. One that you know can't cook, but you don't care. Oh, but she can cook. Oh, please, Mr. Piazza, you've just got please to... Please call me Angio. All right. Angio. And what is your name? Margie. Margie Albright. Margie. To say that I'm intrigued is putting it mildly. 
Suppose you come to my apartment tomorrow night at six for dinner. We discuss the matter more thoroughly. You want me to come to your apartment? The Sky Tower Arms, apartment 1200. Well, all right. But I was hoping you'd want to do something about it right now. Uh, tomorrow at six. I promise I shan't disappoint you then. What are you, a joker? I've been down to that darn airport and I've met every flying contraption that's ever been built. Oh. Oh, yes, the airport. Mr. Horton never showed up. Client or no client, I don't care how big a client he is. I'm going to call him right now and tell him off. It wasn't Mr. Horton's fault. It was my fault. Your fault? He called back right after I called you. He said to tell you he'd changed his plans. He wasn't going to come. He said to? And why didn't you call me? I forgot. You forgot. You forgot. And I've been waiting out there all this time, and you just forgot. I think I'll go to bed before you get angry. Get angry? What do you think I am now? Dad, there's something else I want you to know. Everything I do is for your own good. I'd do anything to see you happy. Like not calling and letting me go to the airport? Well, even that was a big favor, only you don't realize it at the moment. I'd even lie if I thought it was for your own good. Remember that, just in case you find out that I maybe told a little fib somewhere along the line. Oh, I get it. Your conscience is bothering you, eh? Margie, I demand to know what you're talking about. I've said all I'm going to say. Margie, come back here. Margie. I'm past 21 and you can't boss me around. As far as I'm concerned, you're still a child. I'm not a child. You're a child, you're going to do as I say. Now tell I'm me what... I'm not a child. I know you're 21, but to me, you're still a little girl. Little girl? I suppose you think a little girl could have a date with a man like Angio Piazza. Stop being ridiculous. Ridiculous, huh? Well, get this. This little immature girl, this little ungrown up child is having dinner with Angio Piazza at his apartment tomorrow night. <laughs> I'm looking for Margie. I just came home from the office oh, and I can't... Little Fee was probably so excited she forgot to tell you. She left just a few minutes ago. Left? From where? From Mr. Piazza's apartment. Angio Piazza? Yes. Goodness, you miss everything. He was in your apartment yesterday afternoon. What? Did she say where he lived? I believe Margie said the Sky Tower Arms. You should at least telephone. It's very annoying to have unexpected guests drop in on you for dinner. Oh, don't you know, she has a date with Angio Piazza. Yeah, I knew about that date, but I didn't think Margie would go through with it. Oh, I do hope Mr. Piazza has some extra canned goods on hand. We'll be here for dinner in a moment. Oh, fine. Quite soft and lovely as a pale winter moon, yet warm and fragrant as a tropical night. <laughs> That's awful corny, but it knocks me out. <laughs> I'm a right-handed smoker. May I? Oh, yes, of course, my dear. You know, I've been thinking quite a bit about that lovely lady you spoke of last evening. Yes? I'm sure that she and I could get along together splendidly. Oh, but I've hardly told you anything about it. You like me, my way? Your way? I originated it. I will show you. Now, suppose we try without the cigarette. But how could we without cigarettes? Hey! Why do you push me away, Margie, dear? Why did you kiss me? Well, why not stop all this nonsense and admit with a kiss with your heart and soul that you are the woman? What woman? The woman who's crazy about me. Holy mackerel! <laughs> Hey, fella, loan me your jacket and let me take that card in and I'll give you ten bucks. I'm way ahead of you. Mr. Albright. Yes, and I don't need any help. I'll handle this. You've got to believe me, Mr. Piazza. Angio. I didn't mean me. Margie, I understand you are timid. That is why you didn't come out and say it was you from the start. 
of dinner. A few glasses of champagne, some food, you will not be so shy. I know something else I won't be. I won't be here, because I'm leaving. Oh, you're acting like a little girl. Little girl? You ought to be ashamed of yourself luring me up here. Goodbye. Margie, Margie, dear. Angie, oh, darling. Then changeable as a woman. Hold me. Till the end of time, till the well runs dry. Till the waiter leaves. T oh, Margie, as you say, you knock me out. Mm. All right, boy, you may serve. Uh, Margie, I'm going to say something to you I have never said to any other girl. What is it, Angio? I think, I think I could really fall for you. And you've never said that to any other girl. If I'm lying, may there never be another sunrise. It's going to be a long night tonight. Did anyone speak to you? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. No offense, sir. You know, I could spend the rest of my life here with you. May I have your autograph, Mr. Piazza? You're getting on my nerves, you know that? Just wanted your autograph. You could put it on my cuff. I'll be the envy of the commissary. Later, please. Later! You have lovely teeth. So quiet. Hey, speaking of teeth, look at mine. People ask me why that's so white, but you see, it's only an effect. I have a dark mouth. Say some more of those lovely things to me, Angie, dear. Margie, words fail to express my feeling for you. Let this be my messenger. Mm. Oh, get out of here. I'll serve dinner myself. I'm sorry, sir. Union rules. I brought in the wagon. I got to serve. Doesn't the union have rules about your making a distance of yourself? Yes, sir. That's why when I serve, nobody even knows I'm around. Serve the champagne! Yes, sir, that's what I'm doing. May I propose a toast to the most charming young lady I have ever met? This is milk! Why did you serve the young lady milk? I'm not getting into any trouble serving minors. How do I know she's 21? Have you got a license or something? Yes, I'll go buy a pot. I rang, but I guess nobody heard me. I'm here to fix the phone. Margie, I'm sorry for all these interruptions. I'll get rid of these people just a moment. Don't touch me. Margie, just a moment ago you... I'm Margie, leaving. Margie, dear. Vern Albright, what are you doing here? I don't have to do any guessing as to why you're here. Well, I have a perfectly good reason for being here, but I don't have to explain it to you. Well, the question is, what am I doing here? I'm taking my daughter home. Your daughter? And my girlfriend. Get out of my apartment, all of you. You can't push my father. Oh, oh. Being as you were having so much company, Mr. Piazza, I thought it would be nice if I stopped at the store and brought you some groceries. I'm sorry I made such a fool of myself when I saw you there. Well, I suppose it did look suspicious. But how were you to know that I was there for the same reason as you and Freddy? We have our little differences, all of us. But we do stick together. I'm glad you didn't really go for that character. He kissed my hand. Which one? This one. Go wash it. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, may I present a most gracious substitute for your regular host on the hour of symphonic charm, the romantic Angio Piazza.